All aboard! All aboard for fun, fantasy, and a flotilla of prizes. It's the underwater hit show, Land of the Lost, brought to you by Bosco. Yes, Bosco Milk Amplifier, the rich chocolate-flavored syrup that makes milk taste better than a soda fountain treat. You'll like Bosco hot. You'll like Bosco cold. And boy, oh boy, will your Land of the Lost Club go for the swell-tasting drinks that Bosco makes. Yes, fellows and girls, you'll all go for delicious chocolate-flavored Bosco. And now, the Bosco Company presents The Land of the Lost. Land of the Lost A kingdom fair as a dream It lies far under the sea mysteriously Shining with ripples that glimmer and gleam And here is the discoverer of the Land of the Lost, Isabel Manning Hewson. Do you know about that mysterious kingdom at the bottom of the sea? The land of the lost? It's really out of this world. Down there, a telegram is a shellogram. The airmail is carried by flying fish, and the bank is a sandbank. But this kingdom is inhabited by denizens of the deep who guard its treasures, the things that have disappeared from up on earth. The wisest of all these denizens is Red Lantern, the friendly talking fish, who used to take my brother Billy and me to visit the land of the lost. One April morning, everything looked particularly bright and fair. Little did we know that this beautiful day would see us deep in the Neverglades, the great swamp ruled over by old Mugger, the toughest of the crocodiles. Oh, boy, some morning, isn't it, Red Lantern? A regular sparkly, Billy. Look! Even that funny old turtle has come outside his little shop to bask in the sun. Hey, we know him. Isn't that Mr. Terrapinkus, Isabel? The apo... Apoth- the druggist. Oh, why, yes, the one who mixes medicines for the fish folk. It's nobody else. Ahoy there, Mr. Terrapinkus. Oh, how to do, Red Lantern? Well, why so gloomy, my friend? Why are you moping about on a fine day like this? Well, Red Lantern, you know the special spring tonic I put up every year? Uh, Terra Pinkus's sovereign remedy for sea folk? Yes. All the cells like fish cakes. Nothing like it for that languid feeling. Yes, so I've heard, but I... I got a whole list of orders, but I can't fill them. Oh, gosh, why not? Because I'm all out of the most important ingredient, swamp root. Swamp root? Yes, ma'am. That's what really puts the wallop into the mixture. You wonder I got a shell full of grief? The tonic I make in the spring, tra-la, is famous all over the sea. When denizens can't eat a thing, tra-la, and they feel they are losing their zing, tra-la, they order a bottle from me. Oh, they order a bottle from me. But now the demand has outrun the supply. Without any swamp root, I'm left high and dry. You're helpless without it, there's no doubt about it, so what are you going to do? My patients are ailing, my business is failing, so what are you going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Come, come, come now, Mr. Terrapinkus. Swamp root grows in plenty of places. I've always understood there were quantities of it in the great cypress swamp near the mouth of the Uzi River. Oh, yes, Red Lantern, but I can't go traipsing that distance with this big shell on my back. Not at my age. Well, how'd you like us to do your traipsing for you? Oh, goody, Red Lantern, left. Uh, it's mighty good of you folks, mighty kind, but... But what? Well, that there cypress swamp, it's crocodile country, you know. Fins and fiddlesticks, what of it? They're good-natured crocodiles. I wouldn't count on that. But, but, Red Lantern... Why, that's where our old friend Weeping Willie has from. Weeping Willie? 
The funny little guy that came here one time in his watermobile? <laughs> oh, he wouldn't scare anybody. Of course not. And besides, I know Willie can help us. Tadpoles, what do you say? Okay, Red Lantern. That's the spirit. Cheerio, Mr. Terrapinkus. We'll bring you back enough swamp root to dose every denizen in the kingdom. Thank you, Red Lantern. Come on, Pollywogs. This way for the southbound current. <laughs> Well, it won't be long now, Pollywogs. Feel the difference in the water since we got off the current? Mercy, yes. It's, it's as warm as soup and almost as thick. Oh. Well, that's the way the crocodiles like it, Billy. Now, head up. Let's take a look above the surface. Why, why we're swimming right along the shore. Yep. There's the mouth of the oozy river where we... Jiminy, look out. What is it, Billy? Shh. There, on that sandbar. A, a whole flock of crocodiles, fast asleep. Don't whisper, mister. <laughs> we all ain't asleep. Huh? We're just getting our sun down. Oh, Red Lantern. It's all right, Isabel. Uh, sorry to disturb you, friends, but could you tell us where to find Weeping Willie? Let's see now. Willie, he's at the dentist this morning. The, the dentist? Yes, sir. Dr. Tweak uh, of Mola Creek. Uh-oh. It's no distance from here. You just mosey up the oozy. The oozy? First stream runs to it is Mola Creek. Well, thank you. This way, Tadpoles. <laughs> Oh, now, give my love to Euphemia. Euphemia? Who do you suppose he means? Search me. <coughs> hey, isn't that the creek he told us about going off to the left? Yes, that must be a nice scouting, Billy. And look, there's a well, sort of house in the roots of those cypress trees on the bank. With a sign in front. Dr. Jercules W. Tweak. Complete satisfaction with every extraction. <coughs> What's that? One of these satisfied customers, no doubt. Well, let's go on in and... <laughs> Galloping guppies. The waiting room's packed. With, with crocodile patients. Oh, Billy! Get in line there, strangers. You'll have to take your turn. Come first, first, sir. But we don't want to see Dr. Tweak. No, we're looking for Weeping Willie. Ah. He's inside with the doc, the lucky fella. Oh. Lucky? Uh-huh. Euphemia's probably holding his hand right now. Hey, who is this Euphemia? Oh, don't you know, bub? Why, she's the receptionist here. And what a little crocodile. Oh, brother. Aha! Uh -huh. So that's what brings you to the dentist in droves, eh? You said it, mister. Why, since Euphemia's been on the job, we can't wait to have our teeth out. Yeah. Even a filling is thrilling. There she comes now. Gosh, what a vamp. Look at her roll her eyes. Hello, handsome. I'm Euphemia the Crocodile. My grandmama came from the river Nile When I show my teeth in a wisdom smile It's Mammy for the door She's famous for her artful wiles Her suitors travel miles and miles And Euphemia packs them in the aisles Like they've never been packed before Oh my, what that baby can do Oh, baby. It's just my nature to beguile, and the fellows seem to like my style. They make their appointments through Honey Child, and they all come back for more. They all come back for more, more, more. <laughs> more, more, more. Thank 
dear, handsome. That is, I... Uh, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, Euphemia. My friends and I are anxious to talk to Weeping Willie. How long before he's uh, available? Oh, y'all can come right on in. Dr. Tweak's just about finished here. Open wider, please. Thank you. Now, just a little bit wider. That's it. Out she comes. Didn't hurt a bit, did it? Oh, poor Willie. Those aren't crocodiles here at these weeping this time. They're real. Oh, Isabel and Red Lantern and Billy, what are you doing here? We came to see you, Willie, to ask you to help us. But I, I guess you're not feeling too well. Oh, oh he's all right, miss. No shock, no discomfort. Why, you saw how easily that wisdom tooth came out just now. Says you. Oh, my jaw. There, there. You won't even feel it five minutes from now. Oh, yes. But I'll give you something to take in case it should bother you later on. Uh, Miss Euphemia. Gee, thanks, Doc. Here you are, Dr. Tweed. <laughs> Willie, here's a bottle you can carry in your pocket. Uh. If the pain returns, just remove the cork and take a sniff. A sniff? One sniff. That's all that's necessary. There you are, Willie. You're all fixed up. Oh, by the way, Dr. Tweak, speaking of remedies, that's why we visitors are here. Uh, what's that? What's that? Well, you see, I'm in the market for a supply of swamp root. Swamp root, eh? Yes. Our old apothecary in the land of the lost is out of it, and I understand it's plentiful in these parts. Well, yes, sir. It, it does grow around here. But... But you folks ain't got a chance of buying any. Why not, Willie? Because the place where it grows belongs to... Old Mugger. Old Mugger? Who's that? The biggest, the oldest, the meanest crocodile that ever crawled, Isabel. Fourteen feet long and a hundred years old. A most unpleasant character. He owns all the innermost portion of the swamp, and he doesn't like strangers, sir. Keep them eye, Flippers. I'm not asking him to like me. I'm offering him a chance to do business at a profit. Uh, where is this domain of his? You, you don't propose to go there. Well, I certainly don't propose to turn back now I've come this far. If Weeping Willie will act as our guide, we'll start now. Willie? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Willie go anywhere near old mugger? Why, he'd be scared, silly. Oh, you think so, do you, Euphemia? I don't think so, honey. I know. Huh? It'd take a real he crocodile to go all the way into that slimy old swamp. And, and you don't consider me a, a he? Oh, really? You're a cute little fellow. Oh. <laughs> but you just don't raid with the six-footers yet, honey. They're tough. Well, well, I'll show you, Euphemia. I'll show you size ain't everything. If Red Lantern's not afraid to talk to old mugger, I'm not afraid to take him there. Come on, folks. Follow me. <laughs> We'll be back with Isabel and Billy in just a moment. Say, boys and girls, I bet Bosco has Terrapinka's spring tonic beat by an undersea mile. Because wonderful chocolatey-flavored Bosco is not only top-tasting, it puts you right on the top. And top's where you want to be. Every time you stir a spoonful of luscious Bosco syrup into a glass of milk, you're not only giving that milk the grandest chocolate flavor you ever tasted, you're giving yourself extra energy and pep. Because Bosco's rich in extra iron, the important mineral that helps build good red blood for extra energy. Now, you fellas are going to need lots of energy and pep to be stars at baseball and track. You girls want to be stars in your sports, too. So get your iron every day the grand-tasting Bosco way. You get extra vitamin D in Bosco, too, to help you grow up with straight, strong bones like the athletes you admire. Ask Mother to buy you a jar of delicious, chocolatey Bosco milk amplifier today. Ten to one, she'll like Bosco as much as you do. Now, back to the land of the lost. Weeping Willie, a friendly young crocodile, has volunteered to lead Red Lantern and the Pollywogs to the place where they can find Swamp Root, the lair of the largest and meanest crocodile in Uzi River territory. 
Old Mugger. I don't like swamps, Billy. They're so quiet and, and creepy. And the live oak trees seem to be watching you. Yeah. They look like spooky old men with beards. But the beards are only hanging moss. See? Oh, here. Here. Don't, don't go pulling that stuff off the branches, Billy. Those tree line. You mean... We're in Mugger's territory now. The, the Neverglades, they call it. Neverglades? Because so many people have gone in here and... Never come out. What? At least that's what you hear. Oh, Red Lantern, let's turn back. Oh, don't listen to those crocodile tales, Isabel. Why, they're worse than fish stories. Uh, how much farther do we have to go, Willie? Well, I've never been this far myself before. But they say that you know who has a den at the edge of a big stagnant pool in here somewhere. How will we find it, Red Lantern? Well, I, I think we're coming to it now. Yes, see that open space of water ahead? Yeah, round and still and covered with green slime, with trees shutting out the light. And I see a sort of cave on the other side. What do we do now, Red Lantern? Uh, paddle straight across. Okay, but we can't paddle straight across. We'll have to go around that big log floating in the middle. All right, all right. Now what, Isabel? I never thought logs really had bumps. Huh? Oh, you know how people say quiet is a bump on a log. Well, this log has two bumps. Right on top, near the end where we're... <laughs> Isabel, look out, backwater. Oh, what for? <laughs> Those bumps. Huh? They're opening. <gasps> They're eyes. Oh, <gasps> dark green eyes with horny eyelids. <gasps> Fish for Columbus. And that log is no log. It's a 14-foot crocodile. Help! He is old mugger. Taken aback, disturbers of the calm. Were you not seeking me? Well, uh, yes, but we didn't expect you to be playing log, Mr. Mugger. Mm, I amuse myself with many games. Some I play alone, and some with visitors. Uninvited visitors. I don't like the sound of that. Me either. Yes. This is purely a business call, sir. I'd like to buy some swamp root from you for medicinal purposes. Ah, uh, there's one game I never tire of. Still pond. No more moving. But what about the swamp root, Mr. Mugger? I'll pay anything. Swamp root? Bah! You'll get none from me. Eh? Splashing into my private property, waking me out of a three months nap, insulting my sentries. Hold on, mister. Who's insulted any sentries? You have. Huh? Do you think those live oaks back there enjoyed having their beards pulled by a freckled faced upstart? Live oaks? You mean they are alive? As alive as you, and apt to live. Much longer. <gasps> Come a little closer, my boy. No, Billy. What? Uh, I think we'd better be going, since Mr. Mugger isn't interested in our proposition. Going? But that's against the rules of the game we're playing, dear friends. Game? Still, Pond. No more moving for you. Quick, tadpoles. Let's get out of here. We can! We can! Oh, look! Holy smoke! More giant crocodiles. A dozen of them. Coming up from underwater. Forming a ring around the pool. Order them to give us safe passage, Mother, at once. Oh, no, my imperious friend. You are all going to stay for dinner. My dinner. Oh, I knew it. We're goners. I'm tired of eating mud hen. Something young and tender will make an appetizing change. How dare you? These children are under my protection, and I am Red Lantern from King Findall's Court. You should have stayed there, Red Lantern. How's that? It is death to do what you have done today. Disturb old mugger in the midst of a pleasant dream. 
But howling hurricanes, it wasn't intentional. Surely you can go back to sleep again. Fool! Only one dream in a thousand gives me the relaxation I crave. You noisy blunderers have spoiled the first one I've had in months, and you'll pay for it. This way to my den. No, no! Close in, you of the armored guard. We're right behind you, mother. What are you going to do? First of all, I'll add that pretty bracelet that you're wearing to my souvenirs. Oh! And now, what have you, Earth Boy, in the way of valuables, huh? You won't need them anymore. <laughs> That awful mouth is as big as a cavern. Stop, Mugger. You can't do this. You can't make a meal of us. We've done you no harm, and there's plenty of food in the swamp. Yeah, so there is. But a crocodile is never quite full. However, I may save you for tomorrow. And me too. Me too. Don't eat me, Mr. Mugger. Please, don't eat me. You? <laughs> there's not enough of you. I'll make a decent handbag. Huh? Go sit in the corner. Yes, sir. Wait. Yeah. What's that you got in your back pocket there? Back pocket? Just my medicine, sir. My, my toothache medicine. I don't believe you. Hand it over. Oh, can I keep it, sir? The doctor said just a little of it would make me laugh at pain. And my jaw's beginning to ache. Something fear. Hand it over, I say. You're liars, the lot of you. Spies and liars. Toothache medicine, indeed. Don't waste it, please, Mr. Mugger. Mm. Well, it smells good. Mm. Oh. Billy, look. Look, he's beginning to smile. Gee whiz, is it that good, Mr. Mugger? What happened to Mugger? Why, why, look at him, Red Lantern. He's laughing. Laughing till the tears run down his cheeks. <laughs> but, but why? What's the joke? The joke's on Mugger, Isabel. I've just caught on. That bottle the dentist gave to Willie is full of laughing gas. Laughing gas? <laughs> oh, 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 my body and soul. Oh, 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 somebody slap me on the back. Oh, 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 oh but that's, that's wonderful stuff. It's worth all the swamp root in the Everglades. What's that you say? <laughs> I'll give you all the swamp root you want. If you'll just get me some more of this medicine, oh, why, I haven't laughed like this in a hundred <laughs> years. Oh. Do you mean that, Mugger, about the swamp roof? <laughs> Absolutely. If you'll promise to fix me up with another bottle of... <laughs> you better put the cork back in there, Mugger, before you laugh yourself sick. <laughs> hey, you there, yellow tooth. Bring a whole bale of swamp root for Red Lantern. Oh! Yeah, Mugger, right away. Jiminy, what do you know? Seems to me Mugger needed this medicine more than <laughs> Willie ever did. <laughs> needed it? Why, I'd forgotten what it meant to laugh, my dear fellow. I have been going around for a century hating everyone, including myself. <laughs> Oh, but what am I going to do when the bottle's empty, eh? Oh, we'll be back, Mugger. We'll come back for more swamp root next year and bring you another bottle. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, that's a promise, eh? Come on, folks, come on. I gotta get back to Euphemia. Okay, Willie. Goodbye, Mr. Mugger. And keep smiling. You mean like this, eh? Oh! Don't ever, no, never forget how to laugh. There's nothing so helpful for standing the gap. So mind that you're cheery and grin when you're weary. You'll find it's a wonderful law. A fellow who's snappy is always unhappy. So make with a big ha-ha. Make with a big ha-ha. Ready to-
to hear the names of the lucky seven-time winners? You will in just a minute. You know something, boys and girls? I'll bet the schoolmates you look up to and want to be like are the leaders in sports and full of fun at parties. The ones that are brimming with energy and pep. So if you want to rise and shine, if you want the pep and sparkle that make you stand out, you just rise and reach for that jar of chocolate-flavored Bosco every time you pour yourself a glass of milk. Remember, when you stir Bosco into milk, you're stirring in sparkle and pep because Bosco gives you lots of the extra iron that builds good red blood for extra energy. Vitamin D is another big extra in Bosco to help you grow straight and strong. And be sure to remind Mother that Bosco is so extra chocolatey rich, it takes only one or two teaspoons instead of three or four to make a glass of milk taste wonderful. That means more chocolatey treats. It means money saved. Be sure you get the one and only, the rich, full of energy Bosco milk amplifier. Buy a jar today. Well, here come the lucky seven-time winners, the boys and girls who sent in the most interesting letters about toys or treasures they've lost and won't return. First, Sandy Wenner of Detroit, Michigan, founder of a lucky seven club with 32 boys, wins a fine wagon with 10-inch ball-bearing wheels and sturdy enough to carry 1,000 pounds. The biggest hardwood expressed wagon made. Second, to Lois Peterson of Minneapolis, Minnesota, goes a lovely set of dress-up paper dolls. In the fine letter of Donna Lee Rucker of Calhoun, Missouri, wins her a beautiful Indian bracelet. Third, Thomas Harper of Cleveland, Ohio, wins a telescope. Louise Clark of Milford, Connecticut, gets a bag of multicolored marbles. And Gloria Howe of Hartford, Illinois, wins a miniature broom with a gay red handle, just long enough to sweep under Gloria's bed. That's what she wants it for. Fourth, Alan Block of Louisville, Kentucky, will soon be wearing a new Army overseas cap like the one he lost. Carol Manny of Philadelphia gets a tricky pencil to replace the one she wanted a spelling bee. Fifth, duplicate awards of knives go to Michael Parenti of Brooklyn, New York, and Boy Scout Roy Twitty of Antioch, California. Alvin Smith of Gary, Indiana, has proved he believes in our motto, Never Say Lost, by writing many times. Alvin is a member of the Junior Pollywogs Club and wins a set of tempera paints. Sixth, a pair of fine ball-bearing skates to Robert and Geraldine Wash of Chicago, Illinois, who lost a single pair of skates they used to share. To Daraline Perry of Live Oak, California, a handsome ballpoint pen, which she needs badly as secretary of a land of the lost club with eight new members. Barbara Zeldon Rust of Seattle, Washington, gets a flashlight. Barbara is nine years old and has read the land of the lost book over and over. Seventh, last but not least, a quartet of turtle winners, all in New York State. Teddy Judson of Williamsville wins one to replace little Oscar. Vicki Vidal of St. Albans will soon have a new Tim and Tom. Albert Fuss of New York City, president of the Land of the Lost fan club, lost three turtles. He asked us to send him two so that each of them could have a friend for company. Jim Farley of Lake Placid wants a specially little turtle that won't grow any bigger than an orange to replace the one he loved and lost. Congratulations, all you winners, and to the rest of you, remember our motto, never say lost. If you don't win the first time, keep on trying. We want all of you to play Lucky Seven with us. And here's all you have to do. Just write a letter telling us about a toy or a treasure you've lost and why you want it returned. For the letters which our Land of the Lost judges consider the most interesting, we will send a substitute or what, in our judge's opinion, is the nearest possible duplicate of whatever that lost thing may be. Print your name and address plainly and send your letters or cards to the Land of the Lost, American Broadcasting Company, Radio City, New York. And don't forget, Pollywogs, that your letter will be considered not only for a Lucky 7 Award, but for the special grand prize which is announced on the first program of every month. This is for the most interesting letter received during the entire previous four weeks. So get busy now. It's fun to be a winner. And be with us this time next week when Isabel and Billy disobey Red Lantern and get into trouble in a mysterious garden. Tune in same time, same station when Bosco takes you again to the land of the lost. The Land of the Lost is an original story by Isabel Manning Hewson. The director is Cyril Armbrister, vocal arrangements Peggy Marshall, lyrics Barbara Miller, musical background by John Winters. And this is your announcer, Stuart Met. <laughs> This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.